In terms of hormonal therapies, oral contraceptive pills, I would say it is the workhorse in addition to um, spironolactone. So I'm going to be focusing on those two because I think that's where the dermatologists have the most questions um, in terms of uh, prescribing hormonal therapy for acne patients. So estrogen provides the most benefit because it reduces sebum production and it also decreases free t- testosterone and DHEAS levels because it stimulates the sex hormone binding globulin synthesis in the liver. It also inhibits 5-alpha reductase and so that decreases peripheral testosterone conversion and then it decreases the production of ovarian and adrenal androgens. And overall, if um, given a period of six months, in the end, there will be about a 70% reduction of lesion count in studies. Although in my experience, I feel like it's it's much higher than that with the oral contraceptives. Uh, in, in terms of selecting an oral contraceptive, the progesterones that have low androgenetic activity include the third generation um, progestin, so uh, norgestimate, uh, desogestrel, and dosperinone, ending in NOE. Um, are uh, the most commonly prescribed. And the FDA has approved four oral contraceptive pills for acne. Those include orthotricycline, Estrostep, Yaz, and Bayaz. Um, there haven't been any head-to-head studies showing superior efficacy of one versus the other. In terms of key counseling points for women, uh, so first of all, the, the World Health Organization the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, we ACOG and Planned Parenthood have all said that um, no pap smear or pelvic exam is required. There is a concern of a very, very slight increase of clotting risk, where the risk of DBT at baseline is one in 10,000 women years. And um, at one year, it's 3.4 for 10,000 women years. Relative to pregnancy, which is 10, for 10,000 years, it still is much less than that. Um, and so really this becomes an issue primarily if the patient's a smoker or is hypertensive or a diabetic. And um, in terms of uh, concerns that the patient may have surrounding cancer, the World Health Organization study in terms of breast cancer showed that um, the relative risk increase was 1.24 um, for patients that were on oral contraceptive pills because of the presence of the estrogen. So it's a very, very slight increased relative risk. And they actually showed a risk reduction of endometrial, colorectal, or ovarian cancer. Uh, the most common side effects include unscheduled bleeding, which is what we call breakthrough bleeding, nausea, breast tenderness, or uh, one to two can weight gain in about 30% of patients. And that's actually due to fluid retention. There can be a decreased libido, development of melasma, as well as mood changes. And although some patients really report a stabilization of their moods because they're pregnant, they're, uh, they're, because their periods appear um, to be less uh, painful and severe. Uh, in terms of concerns regarding systemic antibiotics, when you are on oral contraceptive pills, they're fine to use with the exception of 3A inducers. So Rifampin, uh, which we sometimes use for colonization of Staphylococcus aureus, that has actually been um, the antibiotic that has uh, responsible for pregnancies um, on oral contraceptive pills in, in three quarters of cases, so 76% of cases. And so it's really primarily rifampin um, if we were doing a decolonization on a patient that was using oral contraceptive pills that we'd have to make sure that they were using backup contraception. Um, It's very safe to give tetracyclines. Um, There's no difference in pregnancy rates. And and that's probably one of the most common antibiotics that that will be uh, combined with oral contraceptive pills. Um, In terms of contraindication, so who would you not give oral contraception to? So this would of course include a pregnant or breastfeeding patient Also, if there was history of stroke or venous thromboembolism, a myocardial infarction, some kind of cardiovascular disease, then they would be contraindicated. If they're greater than 30 and they smoke, that is a contraindication, or if they have uncontrolled hypertension. So that would be a systolic greater than 160 or diastolic greater than than 100. If they have migraines, 
um, with or and they're greater than uh, age 35, that's a contraindication. Any current or past breast cancer, just because of the, the estrogen present in the oral contraceptive. Um, if they have hypercholesterolemia with an LDL greater of one, than 160, or if they have these with end organ damage, um, and also any liver issues like tumor, uh, viral hepatitis, or cirrhosis. And also if they're going to have any major surgery where there'll be prolonged immobilization because that would increase the risk of a deep uh, venous thromboembolism. 